Hey everybody, we are starting something brand new today, and this is something that I've been thinking about doing for a good little while, and with the recent release of Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, I feel like the perfect time to try is now. So, what are we planning on doing? We're planning on going through an entire published adventure in a narrated story type of style. So we really are focusing on trying to tell the story. We've got a party, we've got backstories with the party, and we want to navigate through this adventure together. We will also be playing a little bit of solo D&D, so I'll be making dice rolls, and the results of those rolls will impact our story in one way, shape, or form. As we go through this adventure, the presentation style will likely transform as I find what I like and what you all like as well. Feel free to leave some feedback in the comments below. Just as a heads up, most of the artwork is done by Mid Journey. I've also done some tweaking in Photoshop, and I will also be using the official art from the published book, and we'll note it accordingly on screen. So with all that being said, let's dig in. More than 500 years ago, clans of dwarves and gnomes made an agreement known as the Fandelver Pact, by which they would share a rich mine with a wondrous cavern known as Wave Echo Cave. In addition to its mineral wealth, the mine contained great magical power. Human spellcasters allied themselves with the dwarves and gnomes to channel and bind that energy into a great forge called the Forge of Spells, where magic items could be crafted. Times were good, and the nearby town of Fandolin prospered as well. But disaster struck when bandits swept through the north and laid waste to all in their path. A powerful bandit force reinforced by evil mercenary wizards attacked Wave Echo Cave to seize its riches and magic treasures. Human wizards fought alongside their dwarf and gnome allies to defend the Forge of Spells, and the ensuing spell battle destroyed much of the cavern. Few survived the cave-ins and tremors, and knowledge of the location of Wave Echo Cave was lost. For centuries, rumors of buried riches have attracted treasure seekers and opportunists to the area around Phandalin, but no one has located the lost mine. In recent years, people resettled the area, and Phandalin is now a rough-and-tumble frontier town. Recently, a trio of dwarves, the Rockseeker brothers, discovered the entrance to Wave Echo Cave, and they intend to reopen the mines. Unfortunately for the Rockseekers, they aren't the only ones interested in Wave Echo Cave. Let's meet our party. The Driftwood Tavern in Neverwinter is a cacophony of laughter and clanking tankards, the air thick with the scent of ale, and the warmth of camaraderie. Gareth Stonefist steps through the door, the din of voices washing over him like a familiar embrace. The flickering light of lanterns casts dancing shadows on the wooden beams, and the hum of conversation fills the air. At a corner table, Gareth spots a stout figure dwarfed only by his own determination. It's Gundren Rockseeker, a fellow dwarf with eyes that sparkle with a glint of hope and a touch of weariness. He sits, his gaze fixed on the door, as if willing fate to send him a worthy and willing volunteer. Gareth approaches, his footsteps steady on the well-worn floorboards. Master Rockseeker, I presume? He greets, his voice a rumble that carries over the tavern's merriment. Gundren's eyes brighten with recognition. Aye, that's me. He replies, a hint of relief in his voice. And you, my friend, must be Gareth Stonefist. Word has it, you're a dwarf of action and honor. Gareth's lips curl into a wry smile, a nod of acknowledgement. Action, at least. Honor? Well, that's earned. Gundren chuckles, a sound that resonates with the ease of familiarity. Wise words, Stonefist. I've been in search of someone with a stout heart and a strong arm. The road to Phandalin has grown perilous of late, and my wagons carry goods that are needed. Gareth's gaze flicks to the window where Gundren's supplies sit outside, a silent testament to the dwarf's mission. Then what's the reward for this task? Gundren leads forward his tone conspiratorial. Ten gold pieces, fair and square. It's a sum that speaks to the worth of the task, but the safety of those supplies is worth far more. Gareth meets Gundren's gaze with a nod of agreement. The tavern around them seems to fade, the world narrowing down to this pivotal moment. You've yourself a guardian, Master Rockseeker. The road to Phandalin shall be safe under my watch. With a hearty clap on the shoulder, Gundren seals the agreement. Good to hear, Stonefist. I'll have the supplies at Orthan's stables just outside the city tomorrow morning. I'm headed out with Sildar here in a few hours. Once you get to Barthen's provisions in Phandalin, ask for Elmina, and she will get you your gold. Travel safe, and thank you. As they part ways, Gareth feels a sense of purpose settle in his chest. The promise of adventure beckons once more, this time in the form of a wagon laden with supplies and a dwarf named Gundren Rockseeker. Little does Gareth know, this chance meeting in the bustling tavern marks the beginning of a journey that will lead him to the frontier town of Phandalin, and into the heart of a new and perilous adventure. Not too far off, the Temple of Saluna in Neverwinter stands as a beacon of serenity amidst the bustling city. Its graceful spires reach toward the heavens, bathed in gentle glow of moonlight. Inside, the temple exudes an air of tranquility, a refuge from the chaos of the outside world. Olena Silverleaf, her silvery hair cascading like a lunar waterfall, kneels in quiet contemplation before the grand altar of Saluna. Her mentor, the venerable Sister Althea, watches over her with a serene smile. Sister Althea, with eyes that have witnessed countless phases of the moon, has been a guiding light 
light in Elena's journey of faith. Elena, Sister Althea's voice carries the wisdom of ages. The time has come for you to embark on a sacred mission. Vandalin, a frontier town far from the calming embrace of Saluna, has reached out to us. They seek to learn more about Our Lady of the Silver Moon. Elena rises from her prayer, her heart filled with both reverence and anticipation. Sister Althea, I am ready to serve our goddess and share her light with those in need. Sister Althea nods, her silver hair shimmering like a moonbeam. Vandalin awaits you, dear Elena. Among the townsfolk you will find Sister Gariel, a worshipper of Timora who has requested our guidance. It is a divine convergence of faiths, an opportunity to foster understanding and unity. Elena bows respectfully, her voice resonating with devotion. I shall carry Saluna's message of peace and guidance to Phandalin, Sister Althea. As the moon continues its silent journey across the night sky, Sister Althea imparts her blessings upon Elena, placing a delicate pendant of Saluna around her neck. It is a symbol of the goddess's presence and a token of trust. May the Lady of the Silver Moon watch over you, Elena. Sister Althea says, her voice filled with unwavering faith. Phandalin awaits the wisdom you carry, and the light of Saluna shall shine upon their hearts. With her mentor's words echoing in her soul, Elena Silverleaf departs the Temple of Saluna, her path illuminated by moonlight. The journey to Phandalin is not merely a physical one, it's a spiritual odyssey, a quest to bridge the gap between fates and kindle the divine spark within the hearts of those she will meet. Earlier that day, in the bustling streets of Neverwinter, they're alive with the energy of commerce. Market stalls line the cobblestone thoroughfare, each one a vibrant tapestry of goods and wares. Among them stands Finnegan Finn Swift, a figure of stealth and grace in the midst of a bustling crowd. Her keen eyes catch a cluster of dwarven figures, their presence commanding attention. It's Gundren Rockseeker and his brothers, their voices blending in a symphony of deep, resonant tones. At their side stands Sildar Hallwinter, a human of noble bearing, his presence as imposing as it is regal. Finn lingers by her market stall, her wares on display, but her attention fixed on the conversation unfolding nearby. The Rockseeker brothers speak of Phandalin, their voices tinged with a mix of nostalgia and hope. They share tales of its small town charm, its sense of community, and the promise of a new beginning. As the conversation ebbs and flows, Finn's agile mind seizes upon an opportunity. Phandalin, it seems, is a place ripe for new ventures. Her fingers trace the intricate patterns of her merchandise, her thoughts dancing with the possibilities. With a subtle shift in posture, Finn positions herself to catch more of the conversation. She listens intently as Gundren speaks of the town's potential, of its need for goods and services. The notion takes root in her mind like a seed in fertile soil. Vandalin, a place where she could not only ply her trade, but also carve out a place for herself. The decision forms like a silent vow. Finn will go to Vandalin to see for herself the town that holds the promise of new horizons. She envisions her stall amidst the quaint streets, her wares drawing the courteous gaze of townsfolk and travelers alike. As the dwarves and Sildar eventually move on, Finn watches them go, her resolve solidifying. With a determined glint in her eye, she begins to pack her wares. Vandalin beckons, a canvas upon which she'll paint the story of her own success. The Thornwick estate is a bastion of refinement and tradition, its halls adorned with tapestries that whisper of generations past. In the heart of its venerable mansion lies the study, a sanctuary of knowledge and legacy. Alden Thornwick's stands before his father, Lord Bertram Thornwick, the weight of responsibility and expectations palpable in the air. The room is bathed in the soft glow of candlelight, its shelves lined with tomes bearing the wisdom of ages. The scent of polished wood mingles with the faint aroma of aged parchment. Lord Bertram, a figure of regal bearing and stern countenance, regards his son with a mixture of pride and gravity. Alden, he begins, his voice a resonant timbre that commands attention. You have reached an age where your horizons must extend beyond these walls. You are a Thornwick, and with that name comes a duty to our legacy. Alden meets his father's gaze, his own expression a reflection of earnest determination. I understand, father. I am ready to take on the responsibilities that come with being a Thornwick. Lord Bertram nods, a trace of warmth softening his stern demeanor. Good. It is time you took ownership of the cottage in Phandalin. It has been part of our holdings for generations, and now it falls to you to oversee it. Alden's eyes brighten with a mixture of surprise and anticipation. The mention of Phandalin stirs curious excitement within him. Phandalin, father? Lord Bertram steps forward, a weathered hand resting on Alden's shoulder. Yes, my son. The cottage is a piece of our history, and it is time we assessed its worth. You will go, inspect the property, and ensure it is maintained in a manner befitting the Thornwick name. Alden nods, a sense of purpose filling in his chest. I will see to it, father. I shall leave for Phandalin at first light. His father's gaze holds a mix of pride and expectation. You are a Thornwick, Alden. Make our name proud. As Alden departs the study, the weight of his family's legacy settles on his shoulders. The promise of Phandalin beckons, a new chapter in the annals of the Thornwick history. For the past few days, our group of strangers has been tracing the winding path of the high road, a well-trodden route 
that meanders southward from the bustling heart of Neverwinter. The road stretches out before them, a lifeline connecting the city's embrace to the distant frontier. Each step carries with it the promise of new encounters and untold adventures. Gareth guides the wagon with a practiced hand, his weathered features a testament to the years spent beneath the open skies and beneath the eaves of ancient forests. His gaze, though fixed on the horizon, carries the weight of purpose and determination. Elena rides with a grace that seems to mirror the sway of the trees over her head. Her silvery hair catches the dappled sunlight, a radiant crown that hints at her otherworldly connection. In these moments of quiet travel, she finds solace in the whispers of the wind and the gentle rhythm of the journey. Finn, ever watchful, quick-witted, stands sentinel over the wagon's cargo. Her gaze sweeps over the landscape, sharp eyes missing nothing. Each turn of the wheel and sway of the road is an unspoken promise, a dance with destiny that she embraces with the fervor of one who knows that opportunity knocks in the most unexpected of places. Alden, the scholar, occupies a space of quiet contemplation. His eyes pools of deep thought roam the landscape, absorbing the nuances of the world around him. The road unfurls a tapestry of history and mystery, each stone and leaf a potential clue to the greater narrative that awaits. As they travel, each party member carries with them the weight of their individual reasons for journeying to Phandalin. In the rhythm of hoofbeats and the creak of wagon wheels, they find a certain comfort, a reminder that in this shared journey they are not alone. Fate, in its ever mysterious ways, has drawn them all to this singular moment this singular wagon. A half day ago, they turned east onto Tribor Trail, and it now stretches out before Gareth, a sinuous ribbon of earth and gravel winding through the rugged expanse. He guides the wagon with hands weathered by countless journeys, every jolt and turn a testament to the road's wear and tear. The rhythmic clatter of hooves and the creaking protest of the wagon's wheels punctuate the stillness of the wilds. Finn, an ever watchful sentinel, leans against a stack of supplies, her sharp eyes flicking from the dense tree line to the winding road and back again. She raises her voice, it's a measured cadence carrying purpose. Keep your wits about you. The road may be open, but the woods hold their secrets still. Alden Thornwick, a figure of scholarly pose, perches at the wagon's edge, his gaze fixed on the distant horizon. Indeed, caution is our staunchest ally. The Tribor Trail bears witness to its share of perils. As they round a bend, the tableau that unfolds is one of stark contrast. The tranquility of the woods gives way to a scene of chaos and struggle. Two horses, their coats muddied and eyes wide with trepidation, stand as sentinels against the remnants of battle. Gareth's brows knit together, his grip on the reins tightening. Hold, something amiss lingers here. With a deft command, he halts the wagon, and they all descend, approaching the site with a mixture of caution and concern. Elena's demeanor softens as she steps toward the horses, her hands outstretched in a gesture of calming reassurance. Steady now, my darlings. You are safe in our care. Her words carry a soothing lilt. Finn, ever the discerning eye, kneels to examine the scattered remnants. A scuffle, no doubt about it, and these noble steeds... She trails off, studying them more closely. Gareth studies the horses for a moment, a glimmer of recognition dancing in his eyes. Ah, Finn, these belong to Gundren and Sildur. Gundren hired me to drive this wagon to Fandolin. They've been through a harrowing ordeal. He turns to the others, his voice filled with resolve. We must investigate further. There may be clues that shed light on their fate. Alden steps forward, his keen intellect already at work. Agreed. Let us be methodical in our examination. Every piece of information may be vital. He begins to scan the area, his gaze sweeping over the signs of struggle. As the party delves deeper into the scene, the forest around them seems to hold its breath. The Tribor Trail, once a promise of safe passage, now guards its secrets and trials. They move with purpose, each member lending their skills to the investigation, determined to uncover the truth. Alden's perceptive gaze rose over the scene, a scholar's curiosity piqued by the remnants of struggle. Amongst the scattered belongings, he spies a glint of weathered leather, nestled amidst the fallen leaves. With measured steps, he approaches, fingers reaching out to cradle the find. He reaches down and opens the case, only to find it empty. A map case? Interesting. Garrus' keen eyes sweep over the scene, taking in every detail with a practiced scrutiny. His gaze narrows on the ground, where the earth tales the tale of recent violence and chaos. Among the scattered remnants of the skirmish, he discerns a series of prints, small and ragged, pressed into the dirt with purpose. The tracks are unmistakable to Gareth, the work of goblin feet. Each print is twisted signature, a dark blot on the canvas of the forest floor. They lead away from the scene, in a winding trail of malevolence that snakes into the underbrush. The goblins, it seems, did not waste time in their plunder. With a resolute nod, Gareth bends closer, his fingers tracing the the edge of the track. He notes the telltale signs, the depth of the imprints, the slight smudges where goblin weaponry grazed the earth. It is a language he knows well, a dialect of survival and cunning. As he follows the tracks with the ease of one who has spent a lifetime attuned to the natural world, Gareth's senses become attuned to the nuances of the trail. He discerns the rhythm of the goblins' retreat, the urgency that drives their steps. They are not mere scavengers, but hunters in their own right, seizing an opportunity in the wake of chaos. The forest seems to hold its breath, an expectant hush that's broken by the sharp whistle of an arrow. It's a heartbeat of crystalline tension. The flesh mere inches from Gareth's head. Time warps in that suspended a moment, the air trembling with resonance of an unseen threat. Then, a warning from Finn shatters the stillness, a clarion call to action. We're not alone out here, friends. 
From the shadowed underbrush, figures emerge with a sinister grace, their eyes gleaming with malevolent intent, an ambush sprung to deadly effect. In the heartbeat of surprise, the goblins strike with eerie coordination. A second goblin's arrow proves more accurate than the first, its arrow finding its mark with a brutal precision. Pain erupts in Garrus' side, searing lance that steals his breath. It's a grounding reminder of mortality, the metallic taste of blood in his tongue. Two more goblins step forth from the shadows. Their arrows both fall wide of their intended targets. As the skirmish unfolds, Alden moves with swift grace, his incantations conjuring a protective shroud. There's a shimmering barrier that wraps around him, a palpable force field humming with arcane energy. Seeking cover behind the wagon, Alden fortifies his position, a sentinel of magic. Shortly after finishing her warning, Finn is pierced by an arrow. Egged on by the success of the previous arrow, another goblin loses an arrow in the direction of Gareth, finding purchase near his shoulder. The fourth goblin takes aim at Elena and cackles as its arrow finds a hole in her armor. The final arrow glinting through the air towards Alden before reverberating off his arcane shroud and falling limp to the dirt. Elena charges forward, her mace a glinting arc of righteous fury. It finds its mark with a resounding thud, a blow that reverberates through both weapon and target. The goblin reels a snarl of pain escaping its twisted lips. Finn's dagger, thrown with the precision of a practiced hand from behind one of the horses, finds its target in the same goblin. It's a swift, lethal strike, the blade burying itself deep. The goblin crumples, a testament to Finn's deadly accuracy. Gareth, his resolve unwavering, becomes a whirlwind of motion. He charges at the nearest goblin, his long sword flashing in a dead the arc, the blade meets flesh, a scything slash that ends the goblin's existence in a gush of dark blood. A primal satisfaction surges through Gareth, a visceral reminder of his martial prowess. In the same breath, he summons the reserves of his resilience, a second wind that knits his wounds and bolsters his strength. Round two unfurls with a cackling of arcane fire. Alden's spell lances forth, a searing bolt that consumes its target. This goblin is engulfed in flames, a scream of agony rising before it crumples to the forest floor. The final goblin, sensing the tide of battle shift, takes a desperate gamble. It flees with feral agility, dashing north into the brush. Its escape is hastened by the thicket's embrace, a vanishing act that leaves the forest in tense silence. As the echoes of combat fade, the forest reclaims its dominion, the air heavy with the scent of earth and verdant life, the tension dissipating like mist. The party stands amidst the aftermath, chest heaving, senses still attuned to the pulse of the wild. Their gazes turn toward the path that veers north, a serpent's trail through the heart of the woods. Alden, his brow furrowed in thought, breaks the silence. That path leads north, he observes, his voice measured. It's likely the goblin made its escape in that direction. Elena, her face etched with concern, chimes in. We simply can't let it go. What if it leads us to Gundren and Sildar? Gareth, his jaw set in steely resolve, nods in agreement. Ah, we must follow. Every moment counts. Finn, her expression pensive, interjects. Vandalin is still our goal. We can't afford to be sidetracked. The forest around them again seems to hold its breath, a silent witness to their deliberation. Each party member carries their reasons and convictions, a tapestry of hopes and fears woven into their choices. Alden, the voice of reason, seeks to find common ground. Perhaps we split up. Some of us follow the goblin's trail while the others continue on to Fandolin. Gareth, however, dismisses the notion with a shake of his head. No, we stick together. Strength in numbers, that's what we need. After moments of tense deliberation, a decision coalesces. The party, their fates intertwined, agree to follow the goblin north. It's a path fraught with uncertainty, but one they tread with determination in their hearts. The forest, now a silent sentinel, bears witness to their resolve. The journey continues, a tapestry of fate's design woven with each step along the path. Gareth, his broad shoulders tensed with purpose, steps towards the wagon. With a determined effort, he begins to steer it off the main trail and into a thicket of dense underbrush. The wheels creak in protest, but Gareth's strength prevails, and soon the wagon is concealed, a quiet sentinel in the shadows. As the party prepares to head north, Gareth turns to them, his gaze steady. The wagon's hidden now. Should be safe here. Let's determine our marching order. Alden, sharp and calculating, speaks up. I'll take point. My knowledge of the arcane may prove useful in spotting any magical traps or wards. Elena, her mace held with a sense of quiet determination, steps forward. I'll stand by your side, Alden, ready to lend the aid of Saluna if need be. Finn, eyes sharp and keen, joins them. I guess I'll take the rear. Keep an eye on our backs. No surprises from behind, you know. Gareth, satisfied with the arrangement, nods in approval. Then I'll stand between Alden and Elena, ready to shield and strike as the situation demands. With their position settled, the party turns northward, each step a resolute march towards the unknown. The path ahead stretches like a ribbon of destiny, and they follow it with unyielding determination, their fates intertwined in the quest for the answers and hope of reuniting with Gundren and Sildar. The party moves forward, their footsteps cautious with the forest path. After nearly ten minutes, suddenly, and without warning, Alden triggers a hidden snare trap. In an instant, he's ensnared and lifted off the ground, and left dangling upside down, a look of surprise on his face. The party freezes, their attention drawn to Alden's predicament. Gareth's brow once again furrows in concern. Hold on, Alden. 
We'll get you down. Finn steps closer, eye scanning the trap's mechanism. Looks like you found yourself in a bit of a situation there, Alden. Alden's voice is laced with good-natured humor. Yes, it appears so. Any chance one of you could lend a hand? With a determined nod, Gareth steps forward. He assesses the snare, and with a swift and precise motion, cuts the vines. Alden falls to the ground with an ugh. Elena is quick to rush to his side, her healing magic knitting together his minor wounds. Hold still, Alden. I'll mend what I can. The party watches as Alden is tended to, a mixture of relief and solidarity settling over them. Before the party continues, Gareth instructs. Keep your eyes open for more traps. I have a feeling that wasn't the only one on this trail. The party continues forward, caution in every step. Alden, once again leading the way, this time keeping a much keener eye. As the party continues down the forested trail, Alden's keen eyes catch a subtle disturbance in the earth, revealing a concealed pit trap. Alden's voice carries a note of urgency. Hold, everyone. There's a pit trap ahead. It's well hidden, but I've spotted it. Gareth leans forward to get a better look, his eyes narrowing at the potential hazard. Good catch, Alden. We need to be careful. Finn, can you see if there's any way to bypass it? Finn crouches near the edge of the trap, studying it intently. Hmm. It's cleverly disguised, but I think I see a safe path around it. Just follow my lead. Elena watches with a mix of admiration and concern. Be careful, Finn. With a series of deft movements, Finn guides the party around the pit, each step deliberate and sure. They move with a collective sense of caution, relying on one another for support. Once they've safely passed the trap, Gareth claps Alden on the shoulder. Well spotted, my friend. Your sharp eyes may have just saved us from a nasty fall. Alden smiles in acknowledgement. Just doing my part to keep us all in one piece and trying to learn from my mistakes. The party continues on, their senses heightened by the close call. And here is where we leave our group of adventurers. Let me know what you think of things so far and how you think our party will handle the upcoming challenges that await them. Thanks a ton for watching. Special thanks goes out to my patrons. You're all amazing. We will catch you all in the next one.